All right, hey everybody, welcome to another uh, episode, I guess, of quick data proteomics data analysis. Um, I'm trying to keep these videos under 10 minutes. We see how we do. Today, I'm going to show you how to download DINN, um, put some data in, quickly run it. Um, it's super easy, not so hard. You could do it with all of the DIA data we generate here in the core. Um, no need to pay us for it. Um, really easy, fast, free uh, data is very good. So let's get to it. All right, first thing you want to do, open your browser. I have not replaced Edge with Chrome for some weird reason. Um, and we're going to download DIANN, which is the most sensitive DIA search engine. Um, you'll come up with the paper. You could read the paper. Um, I recommend it. Um, it's really good. Your second link, or depending on how you're searching, should be the GitHub site. Um, there's lots of good information here. You should read all through it. The manual is super easy, uh, super easy to read. They put a, a lot of good work into it. Um, so what we're going to do, we're going to download, click this link to download it. The current version is 1.8 as of February 2022. Uh, if you're on Windows, click on this and download it only takes a couple seconds uh, if you're using stupid edge it'll give you some warnings about whether it should keep it make sure you click keep anyway open it in the wherever you downloaded it double click it'll give you some dialog boxes next next uh, i've already installed it so i'm not going to do that um, so once you've installed it um, it should show up with an icon on your desktop. Um, if not, just type in D-I-A-N-N -N and let's start it. Okay, what you want to do is in your upper left is where we put in the mass spectrometry files we're going to generate for you, or you could get them anywhere. Um, if they're done in our Orbi traps, they're going to end in .raw. Um, if they're done in our TimsToff, they'll be .d. So right now we're going to compare two TimsToff runs. Um, we're going to do dot D for, we're going to do dot D. But before we do it, let's download a proteome to search. That's an important part. We're going to open edge again. I, we get all of these from Uniprot. Um, if they're not in Uniprot, you're in for a world of hurt. They can still be done. Um, but Uniprot's the place to go. All right, this is human. So we're going to type in human. Um, it'll pop up your proteomes here. Um, you want to look at the total protein count. Sometimes, um, like viruses or some things, can be hard to search. You can see this one only has like three proteins. Um, there are 79,000 proteins in this database. The human is proteome ID 5640. What I like to do is I like to download the minimum number of proteins I can while representing all the genes we can in the proteome. So usually that's this one. Download one protein sequence per gene. Not all organisms have this, but human does. So we click on that. And you can see that it only took like a second to download. Um, it'll be zipped. You unzip it. You see I've done this multiple times before, and that's why there's like a three in there. Um, the FASTA file should be here. And so what we're going to do is we're going to first step, use DIANN to predict it, to take the FASTA and predict, um, use deep learning to predict the spectra, um, the intensity, the ion mobility, uh, retention time, and extra retention time. So we're going to add the FASTA here. We go to the downloads where we did it. And it doesn't matter where, but we'll take this one. It should be human up 5640 underscore 9606. Go open. You'll want to do uh, click these two boxes, FASTA digest, deep learning. Um, I usually leave oxidative, oxidized methionine off. Uh, that's the way it's recommended in the software. But you can turn it on. It'll probably give, may or may not give you a boost. Um, let's see. You'll want to change the main output to where the library is going to go. Um, you know, you could just put it, make a directory, or just call it human unaproach. Maybe give it a name. I'll have the date stamped. Um, you know, and you hit save. 
and then you don't have to add the raw files here because we're going to do this in two steps. Um, you hit run and some stuff will come up in the dialog box. Uh, make sure you set your threads right. Um, I should have set this to 20, but it's just an example. This computer has 20 threads. Um, but it'll go through, it'll take about an hour. Um, I'm gonna stop it, and because I've done this before, and we're like a little cooking show. So when you're done, you will have a spectral library. I have done this before. Um, you only have to do this once. I'd probably do it every month or two, uh, just as new proteins come online for human I don't know, you don't even have to do it that frequently. Um, I've done it before and named it Human Library Predicted, and it'll end in .spec lib. You see it at about a gigabyte. Um, just open it. You don't need the FASTA file anymore. All you need is the spectral library. Um, and you don't have to click precursor. You don't have to click these because we've already done it. So we're not doing a library free or deep learning because we've already done the library free deep learning and made the library. So there we go. Um, surprisingly or not surprisingly, DINN works really well with the whole human library. So you don't have to make a smaller library, though you can if you want. All right, so we're going to add two .d files. Click this. We're going to add, I just have two random ones I picked. Um, and I can even put these on a repository if you ask to see if you could reproduce this. And one's a 60 minute, 50 nanograms, K562, and one's 25 minutes. Usually not recommended to mix gradient lengths, although DIA, NN, and Spectra not make pretty good work out of it. All right, so we added two files. We have the Spectra library. Make sure we don't have a FASTA file here. I don't actually think that matters, but we're just going to search against the predicted library we made. We uncheck these. Um, we want to give it a main output, and we're going to put this, we'll just call it um, like test three or something. And we're going to give it a name, K562. Uh, output and it's going to generate another spectral library and I'll tell you why it does this in a minute and we'll call it K562LIB. So what DIA and, do, and does is make a smaller library from the big library of just the peptides that um, it thinks it identified and then it does that library again so it's kind of like a two-pass search. All right when you're done Make sure you hit run here. We're going to up the threads to 20. You usually like add one thread less than what your CPU has just so you don't cripple yourself. So this has 20 threads, I think. Um, if you don't know how many threads it has, you can open your task manager. Um, make sure you have it um, as many details as possible. Go to performance. You can see this one says it has 20 cores. Uh, 10 cores, 20 logical processors. So the logical processors are the threads. So we're going to do one less. So we'll do one. For Tim's TOF, it recommends doing mass accuracy. These two boxes, we do 10. Not completely necessary. I think it does. Uh, it tells you to do 10. Um, it'll tell you in the search box, and then you can stop it and restart it. Um, but I think 10 or 20. Let's do 20. Yeah, let's just do 10 and see what it has. All right, then instead of doing execute, this is if you want to do it in two steps, uh, the spectral library and search lots of different things together. You can add them in a pipeline, but we did it separately. All right, so then you go run, bam. And it should, it says running. Why is there not any? Why is there not any? Did I mess something up? These existing search engines. I think we're okay. NPR 2020. Here we go. All right. So it'll start giving you some text in the log file. Um, usually with Tim's Toth, it will tell you if you've done something. I think it recommends like 10 to 20 ppm. All right. This will go, this will work for like maybe half an hour to an hour to overnight, depending on how many runs you got there. Um, I'm going to stop it. And I will show you what the output looks like. Let's see. 
this is what the output looks like. Um, you'll see the results. First, it'll give you like a QC, like a PDF, which will be your QC. Um, this is actually really useful. Let's see if we can make this as big as we can. I don't know why did it do that. I hate Edge. Okay, let's do this. Why? All right. Let's see. It will give you some. Oh, why does it do this? Why does it do this? All right. It'll give you some IDs, missing values, uh, just some stats on your runs. Um, you could see one did more than the other. That's probably the 60, 60 versus the 25. Um, these are kind of hard to read. They've always been kind of um, difficult to read. Um, but this is your predicted and uh, indexed retention time. You could see they're pretty well predicted. It'll give you some stats like total quantity. This is the signal. You can see the 60 is more than the 25. Uh, MS1 signal, MS2 signal. If you if you have the same runs, like if you don't do something silly like I did with a 60 minute to 25 minutes, these should about these should be the same. If they're not, eh, it's kind of a, a red flag. All right, it shows you the number of precursors. You can see we identified more precursors here than in the 25 minutes. A precursor is kind of like a transition. Um, multiple pept peptides can have multiple precursors. Just think of it that way. Um, unique proteins, we identified slightly more in the 60 minute. Um, but you can see we identified 5,400 proteins in a 25 minute run, 5,800 in the 60 minute run. Are those 400 proteins worth paying twice, more than twice the amount? Eh, probably not. <laughs> Maybe it depends how much money you have. We do charge by the minute for instrument time. So are you going to pay twice as much for this run and identify 400 proteins more? Um, so anyway, up to you. Uh, full width at half max. This is how wide your peaks are. You can see the peaks are narrower in the 25 minutes, as you can imagine. Um, there's some other useful information you can go through here. Um, the real output you want is going to be either gene groups or protein groups matrix. Um, I like looking at gene groups, but it is totally up to you. This will break out the data by genes. This will break, break it out by proteins. Um, let's look at the gene group output. Double click it. Should open in Excel. Um, these are your genes. These are your files. This would be the 25 minute. This would be the 60 minute. And these will be your quantitative um, readbacks or your results. You can see it's quite a bit bigger in this one. But then they're about the same for this one. And no, is this 180? This is no, it's actually bigger here. So that's 18,000 versus 13,000. Think of these as unitless measures of quantity. So you can put these right into um, whatever favorite statistical program you want um, and do all sorts of nice statistics on them. OK, so let's go and open the protein groups. Um, this one. OK, you can see this gives you a little more information. Um, it'll tell you what the protein names are um, in addition to the genes. So I kind of like this a little better. And you can see the same numbers here. Think of these as unitless measurement quantities um, that are measure the quantity of your proteins across the different samples. Um, so you yeah, have protein groups, protein IDs, protein names, genes. We should have roughly 5,000 or so of them. And we do. Um, see, we have 6,500 here. Um, so not too bad across the two different runs. And you can see there's some missing values. So this was found in the 60 minute, but not the 25 minute. But most of them were found in both. Anyway, that's it. You can take this results, put it in whatever favorite statistical program you want. Um, and you're all done. And that's it from DIANN. How did I do? Did I do 10 minutes? I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. Anyway, um, thanks for watching the first quick uh, video tutorial. I'm going to try to make a bunch of these over the next um, a couple months and we'll see how if anyone watches them okay anyway if you do watch them you find them useful uh, just let me know okay and if you want to um, me to go over anything else um, just send me a link or send me a just send me a DM on Twitter and if you want me to cover something else I will totally do it for you all right thanks everybody